We're speaking with Glenn Morton, who is running for District 5 in Maryland. Is that what you... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Running Thank for Congress, you, District 5 in Maryland. Well, fantastic. Uh, uh, I, I uh, was at a little gathering last night with Mr. Morton and several other candidates, and he's, a, he's a, just a regular guy, really interested in running uh, and serving his people. What do you think about that? Um, every time I've talked to people, I've kind of gotten the same thing. You know, people have a real sense that the government is no longer ours. And when the only criteria for electing someone is that they be something other than you, and you can't expect people to represent your interests. And I'm, I feel humbled, but I feel proud that, you know, there is someone, and not just me, because I've met so many, you know, regular people here that are making a difference, but that there are people who are saying, you know, enough, enough, you know, and it doesn't take more than just me. It doesn't take more than just who I am and what I represent and what I can bring to be a representative of the people. And the fact that I have an opportunity to do it, um, I'm really grateful for it. Um, I would also say that uh, the fact that there are regular people that are standing up and that are so serious about challenging our government um, means that our government is really doing the wrong thing. And uh, I think they're in more trouble than they know. Hmm. Well, you mentioned that uh, last night in, in your uh, talk that one of the r real spurs for you to run for Congress was Obamacare. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, my story is a little unique. Um, you know, I've been in the health insurance and healthcare industry for almost 20 years, and I voted for President Obama in 2008. Um, you know, so when he said his main priority was health care reform, you know, that was my industry. And, um, you know, as an insurance broker, which is, you know, my profession before I, I ran for office, um, the idea is to try to take business from people. You know, it's a very competitive environment. It's what helps keep your prices down. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, look, you know, I knew that if I won the knowledge race, if I could know more about Obamacare than my competitors, that I would take business from them. So I started a business, my very first business I started based on bringing the benefits of Obamacare to my customers. By the time I finished reading it, I was a Republican. <laughs> I had been registered independent. Um, then your question became, what point. benefits? <laughs> where, where are they? And this is what I really want people to understand. When they stand up and say, you get this benefit, you get that benefit, you get that benefit, talk is cheap. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to give people benefits, you've got to show them the money. And when I tried to take the benefits in Obamacare, and apply it to the small businesses and families that I knew needed it most. People I've been dealing with for 10, you know, 15 years. I mean, it just didn't do anything for them. I mean, they said it did something for them. But then when I tried to do something for people, it didn't do anything for them. So then, you know, my spidey sense started tingling. Mm -hmm. You know, like, what is really going on? And um, to find out what I found, you know, that um, the law allows health insurance companies to use the IRS as a collection agency. You know, to take money from people that aren't customers and businesses that aren't customers and increase how much they take forever. You know, that the federal government can now commandeer our money. You know, the federal government commandeers us for a couple things, right? The draft, right? And income taxes. That's it. This is not that. You know, this is taking money from you for not engaging the economy. You know, where I'm from, they call that theft. Mm -hmm. And any president, any congressman in our country who thinks that for whatever reason it's okay to commandeer people's money, I mean, it's not fit to be a leader of the free freest nation in the world. And if we don't stand up, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be in the position I was in to already have the expertise to put all this together. Because it's certainly arcane and, and, and extremely complicated. And you know what? That's the same thing my kids try to do when they haven't done their homework. <laughs> <laughs> overcomplicate the issue, they're, they're huh? Overcomplicate. <laughs> I mean, isn't that what happens in real life? When you see a politician, if they have to say 50 million things to convince you that something's good for you, peek behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. Normally you'll mm -hmm. find somebody pulling the strings. And the health insurance industry and the pharmaceutical industry if somebody went to them and said, can you craft health care reform? 
I mean, they couldn't have come up with anything better than this. I mean, this is flat out giveaway to them. It removes something that everybody can understand. Every business is limited by their customer's ability to afford their products and services. If you remove that limit, then they can charge as much as they want. And that's exactly what this law does because it allows them to take money from people that could not afford their products and services. That's exactly what this does. So now you have a marriage between corporations and government against the best interests of the American people. And that is exactly the legal argument that's going on. This and one of the, one of the uh, charges that Newt Gingrich keeps making is crony capitalism. And, and, and that sure seems to fit the bill. I don't want to judge people I don't know. Um, well, certainly the concept. It has a long history of supporting the idea of an individual mandate. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of anything else they say, if they don't, if they don't have a, uh, a, a, a moment of um, integrity with that, then um, people should very strongly consider their choices. Well, we're certainly considering a choice in Maryland, that's for sure. Uh, we're talking with Glenn Morton again, who's running for the 5th District in, in Maryland. Uh, I, I spoke to a, a Senate candidate in your great state here earlier this week, and uh, one of the questions I had, and I, this may hit you out of the blue, but uh, you may, I'm sure you're aware of it, uh, uh, has been the state song. It is, has a long history of uh, you know, some very delicate matters, uh, and quite a few people in the state of Maryland over the years have tried to get it removed as the state song. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. I know I it's not an do. important issue, but it's an no, interesting no, 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 issue. No, 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 I actually do, and here's what it is. Um, the effort to eliminate the things in our history that aren't necessarily what we would do today um, really takes away from the fact that it takes failure to succeed. And um, I'm not the type of person that wants to erase the things um, that were difficult in our past because my children now, um, and I have four, they don't care. And you know what? That's victory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's victory. Yeah, they don't have to care because right. they've, they've reached a, 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 a level of freedom. People. Yeah. I mean, you know, people talk about uh, American exceptionalism and all that. And, and, and you know what? We are exceptional because of the unique nature of our founding and the unique nature of our being. Mm -hmm. You know, every single subset of the world has people that live here in America. Right? So you can't find that kind of tapestry anyplace else. Having said that, look at what happens when people of different faiths and different beliefs and different cultures and different ideas all come together for the purpose of living as free as possible. Never give that up for a government handout because obviously we can accomplish anything through faith, obviously. Well, and we've uh, we've spoken extensively about Obamacare, but of course, uh, our nation has more other more issues than just that: uh, energy independence, and of course, Obama's uh, uh, seeming destruction of the First Amendment uh, and, and religious uh, uh, conviction here. Yeah. Uh, what other issues are you uh, uh, running on? Well, uh, jobs is a very important issue. Um, you know. Obamacare eliminated my job mm -hmm. uh, as an insurance broker. Um, they replaced us with these things called navigators. Right. Um, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like replacing an accountant with an IRS customer service agent. <laughs> um, so I very personally, and, and there are a hundred thousand other strong middle class brokers out there. Um, you know, our average salary was like seventy thousand dollars a year, um, whose jobs are being eliminated now because of the advance of government, right? If you say the only way to create jobs is for the government to give you something, then you completely eliminate the possibility of creating jobs because you gave something to somebody else, <laughs> you right. know? Or you gave something to yourself. Or, you know, you bootstrapped, you know, which is what our country is known for. There are people out there right now who had an expertise and it's dying on the vine. 
mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, because the government has made them comfortable. You know, we should have a dignity in our poverty. You know, it shouldn't take a big paycheck for us to work hard. In fact, a smaller paycheck should make us work harder. Right. And I think that's what uh, some of the presidential candidates were trying to say, you know, and, um, you know, maybe if they had a chance to sit down and think it through, it, it would have said it in a way that didn't attract so much negative attention. Or maybe I'm being naive and it's <laughs> going to attract negative attention anyway because it's kind of the battlefield. But if you remove the influence of government in the private sector and there is a need there, somebody's going to fill it at a profit. <laughs> you know, so I encourage all people, um, don't necessarily look to a politician to solve your problems. Look to your neighbor. And the more you do that, the more the politicians will go, okay, well, they got it. You know, we don't necessarily hear it clamoring for us to do that thing because they've solved this problem. Once we do that, we automatically limit the influence of government. We automatically create the transfer of money from one person to another that creates jobs. And um, I'm absolutely for that platform. Um, you know, I am not liberal in the sense that, you know, the only way a market can be created or sustained or grown is through government involvement. I'm exactly the opposite because I'm a Washingtonian. You know, I'm born and raised in D.C. and P.G. County. And I know people who work for the government. And there are very good reasons why the government is never the most effective way and is most likely the least effective way to provide a product or a service. Right. So um, I'm, 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 I'm chomping at the bit to get government out of the free market so it can be free again and so we can create our jobs again and so people can rise and fall on their own expertise and their own effort and their own faith. And then all of a sudden our employment problem will go back right to where it was. You know, right where if you need a job you can get one and it doesn't take you, you know, two, three years. To right. Well, let's hope uh, voters in Maryland are champing at the bit to uh, put uh, <laughs> Glenn Morton in office. And uh, please give us your website information real quick. Yes, it's uh, www.glennmortonforcongress.com. Is that F-O-R or the F -O -R number four? F-O-R, okay. Congress. <laughs> right. um, Twitter is uh, Morton4, the number four, Congress. And um, I also created a website called OccupyObamacare.org because I actually developed a better solution and I wrote a book about it called <coughs> Passing Obamacare, which is available on Amazon. Learn a better solution. The idea that what's going on now or the other solutions that you've heard will solve our health care crisis is misleading at best, <laughs> right? But, you know, it's also self-interested for the people who benefit from government solutions to private sector problems. So if you really want to know a better solution, if Obamacare is an issue that, that gets you off the couch and gets you involved, by the time you finish that book, it's only 120 pages, and I wrote it at ninth grade level so anybody can understand it. If you can't afford the book, by the time you look at that website, you will walk away with, that's how it's supposed to be done. And if you elect me in Congress, you will have replaced the second most powerful Democrat in the House on a platform of replacing, not repealing. And I, 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 uh, I'll get a surfboard for the shockwaves. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck, Len Morton. Uh, we hope that the Marylanders uh, see the light and put you in Congress and uh, to get some of these great ideas in there. Yeah. Thanks for being with us here at CPAC. Hey, and thank you so much for the time. And um, I had a chance to talk to you yesterday. Right. People watching him, a very good man. Um, sharing very good information with you so um, I didn't pay him anything to say that either but we will uh, we will uh, get your information out there and hopefully people will send in some donations to help you along your way yeah thank you very much